John Dickinson from 95.7 The Game. Uh, Coach, when you look at Kevin Durant and his aggressiveness, in particular going to the basket and the way you guys were able to, to dominate in the paint, I mean, did Durant set that tone for you guys? And, and did you, is that something you felt you could exploit? No doubt. You know, we, we were talking about it before the game. And, you know, Steve suggested we try to get the ball in his hands right away and put him in a position where he can attack downhill. And uh, so we tried to do that early on, and KD didn't settle. When he had an opportunity, he went downhill, and, and it worked out well. Tim Kawakami, Mercury's bike. We all know that Durant and LeBron's the marquee matchup. Did you, what were your expectations for that going into the game? And since they ended up guarding each other almost the whole time, did you expect that? And how did you think that, that turned out? Uh, I mean, it was two big household names. And so, you know, we know you guys and the fans are going to want to see that and pick up on it. And, you know, I'm sure LeBron probably thinks he could play better. And, you know, you, you tip your hat off to KD because we put him on plenty of guys tonight. Not only did he guard LeBron, but he, he guarded Kevin Love for a while. And then, you know, we put him on Kyrie also. Uh, so his length and his versatility really help out. And I thought defensively overall on all the guys that he guarded, he did a fantastic job. He was a presence. Uh, Mentally and physically, he was locked in. What was the emphasis for him specifically defending LeBron? Just stay big, stay big in front of him? Stay big. And, and you know, LeBron is obviously a very good three-point shooter. And so we wanted, you know, KD to, to you know, make him try to drive, you know, at times as opposed to being able to dance at the top of the floor and measure a three and, you know, try to use your length at the rim and see if he can score over the top of him. Second row on the right. Phil Barber, Santa Rosa Press Democrat. I know you weren't with the team last year, but I'm sure you saw a lot of the film. It seemed like in the playoffs last year, the uh, tactic by opposing defenses was to really crowd at the three-point line, make you guys score inside. Cleveland had success with it. Obviously, today, that didn't work for them. Like, How, how does a sp specifically Durant just change the dynamic of, of that with a team trying to crowd your outside shooting? But, you know, obviously, he's seven feet, and if he doesn't have the ball in his hands, if he's outside the three-point line, you know, you can't help off him much. And if you got Clay out there, you can't help off him much neither. So, uh, you know, depending on who has the ball, that, that key is, or that lane could be wide open. And so, when we, you know, we feel like our opponents have to pick their poison. They're going to crowd the paint and take away, you know, our, our, our layups. Or are they going to guard the three? And, you know, it's just pleasure of having guys that can knock down that three ball or that, that are threats out there. And then on the flip side, you know, you saw it a couple of times. We were stressing, stressing to our wings. Steve stressed our wings even at halftime. Hey, run the floor and fill the corners. If you do that with the way we shoot the ball, I mean, you saw Kevin, I think Katie got maybe three uncontested dunks because we had Steph in one corner and Clay in the other corner, and KD was pushing the basketball. You know, we want our guys to push on every possession, make or miss, because we feel like we play a lot of guys. We feel like our guys are well rested, and we feel like we should be able to attack on every single play. And our guys did that, but it was really important to get our guys to the corner to flatten out the defense and make them decide. Are you going to lead the corner, three-point shooter, and stop the ball, or are you going to stay home? Rick Logan of New York uh, Newsday. Uh, despite uh, your incredible dominance in the paint in the first half, it was still only an eight-point game. What was the talk at halftime? Uh, what do you think fed into that 13-0 uh, that run and, uh, and keeping them off the board for more than four minutes? Well, we, we felt pretty good at halftime. We felt like we played pretty good basketball. We missed a lot of layups that we usually make, and we missed a few jumpers that we usually make. And you know, we felt that you know, we, we, we were trying to keep the game simple offensively because maybe we had one or two turnovers, I think, at halftime. And, uh, <clears throat> and you know, defensively, we knew we could play better. There were a couple of times where we got messed up in our rotations and we kind of stopped. And we didn't continue to give the multiple effort to close out the shooters, and they knocked down some shots. So we, again, we felt like we could play better than what we, we were playing defensively. And the second half, I thought Draymond set the tone. I, you know, it was a, I think maybe the first or second possession. I think they tried to post Steph with J.R. Smith, and 
Steph did a nice job fighting him, and Draymond came over, and there was a loose ball on the ground, and Draymond was the first one to the floor. I mean, came up with it, and we were off to the races, knocked down a three maybe, and from there with the fans in this building, it's tough to recover for anybody. And quick follow, with, with the magnitude of this win, does that have a mental impact on both teams going forward? I don't think so. I, I think that, you know, they're a veteran team, and they've been in this situation before, so they're definitely not going to panic, or they, they're, they're not going to think that we have an advantage, and, and our guys don't either. I got, our guys, again, they're a vet veteran group. They know what they need to do. And so the challenge for them is, or for us, is can, are we going to go out and do it again? Art in the second row. Yeah, Art Spander, a San Francisco examiner. Mike, you've been around the game for a while. Yeah. You coach LeBron. Anybody that, that, that KD resembles with his height and his quickness can play. Almost, he's almost like a point guard who can play center. LeBron? Yeah. Uh, uh, KD. Yeah, yeah. Katie's so versatile. I mean, we, we put him basically at all four positions, and we probably could play him at the five or at the center spot. Uh, but doggone Bob Meyer signed like 18 centers, so we got to find minutes for him. <laughs> <laughs> so Katie can't play center, but other than that, he can play any of the other four positions. Coach, right Steve Bitker from KCBS. Um, Coach Kerr always talks about the assisted turnover ratio and how important it is. Yeah. Have you ever seen, it was 20 to one at the half and 31 to four at the end of the game, especially for a playoff game. Have you seen that before? And were you surprised at all by the fact that they came out so sharp after nine days of not playing? I, no, I, I, you know, after being around this group for a year, uh, anything that they do that's out of the ordinary, which, you know, the turnover Sister turnover ratio is it, it, that doesn't surprise me uh, because they're capable of doing some extraordinary things. Um, but yeah, it, 31 assists, uh, four to turnovers. Who would have thought? I, I wouldn't imagine it, especially going into game one against that team because that team is they're very good defensively, they switch a lot of stuff, they're in the passing lanes, they're physical, and so I give our guys credit for uh, them taking care of the ball. And yeah, Steve has preached from day one, if we win the possession game, we'll have a chance to, to win the game. Back right. Coach, uh, Davide Chinellato, Gazzetta Italy. Obviously, you guys dominated and win a big game. But is there anything you are not satisfied with, especially going into game two? Yeah, we, I mean, just like them, I'm sure they feel like we could, they can play better. But uh, we feel like we can shoot better, uh, not just from the perimeter, but Again, like I said, we, we felt like we had some bunnies around the rim that uh, we didn't finish that we normally finish. So uh, that's one area we, f we feel like we can do a better job in. And then uh, in, in the first half, I, again, I thought defensively, uh, you know, the multiple effort wasn't quite there all the time. You know, we stopped on rotations and they got some good looks. So we can continue to get better uh, in that area especially. Last question here in the front row. Uh, Jacob Palmer, San Francisco Examiner. Coach, how important is Draymond to winning that possession game that you stress so often? He's extremely important because he comes up with, uh, I mean, obviously the, the loose ball that I thought was one of the biggest, one of the catalysts for us going on a run in the second half, comes up with 50-50 balls all the time. Uh, he rebounds the basketball. I mean, he, he had a, 11 rebounds tonight. And then on, on, on top of that, if he's not rebounding the ball, He's tipping it out or he's boxing guys out. And so, you know, you have a guy that does that, flip side defensively, get deflections or get steals like he does, you got a good chance to win the possession game. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys.